All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at these two toroidal cores. And what we're going to do is we are going to build chokes uh, for common mode current with these cores, and then we're going to measure them on a nano VNA and compare their performance. Both of these cores are size 240, and that means the di diameter across the core is 2.4 inches. This one is a mix K type. This one is a mix 31. So the technical uh, designation for this core is an FT ferrite toroidal core 240 K type. This one is an FT 240 mix 31. Now, these cores uh, are pretty pricey. 31 is a really good uh, common mode choke uh, core, and they're about $12.50 a piece. They're very broad banded, but these K-type cores are super expensive. They're like $22.50. And they're supposed to work really well at lower frequencies. And my buddy Kevin, he says that's why that they like to use them in his group. And so he's been saying, hey, man, you got to test this. You got to test this and show it. You got to test it. And I've been very lackadaisical about testing it for him. So today we're going to do that. So here's two examples of these cores wound with wire. And what I used was this Remington 18 gauge wire. It's PTFE coated, which is like a Teflon coating, which makes these things super duper slick and difficult to work with. They are 18 gauge stranded wire. Now, one of the reasons I like to use stranded wire is because RF travels on the outside of a uh, wire. When I have stranded wire, I have more surface area, so I get better current throughput on stranded than I do solid core wire. Now, there's cases when you might want to use solid core, some cases when you want to use stranded, but for these, I like to use the stranded wire. The way these chokes work is that you have 24 wraps all the way around, but it's 12 wraps of a bifiler winding, which means two wires on either side that mirror each other. The current that we like is called differential mode current. That is based off of AC current that we use in amateur radio for our antennas and RF propagation. I have a video below that explains this in more detail if you're interested. I'll link it in the description. But there is bad current too, and that's common mode current, which travels in one direction. With differential mode current, you have current going in and out simultaneously, creating symmetry or a balance. When you have additional currents, that creates an imbalance in your transmission line and can cause problems for amateur radio operators. We want to use a core like this to attenuate that imbalance of current or common mode current. And that's typically going down one side of the core. It's one direction. By connecting our alligator clips in this fashion, we will be running current along the green wires. Because we are going to bypass the black wires and we are going to short our ground out, it's going to create an imbalance in the core. We're going to be able to use a nano VNA to do a S21 or gain measurement. We should see negative gain representing the attenuation produced by the core and its impact on the imbalance current. Okay, so we have our nano VNA connected up. This is not the exact configuration that we're gonna use for the test because I want to stretch this out and I don't wanna have my coaxial cable all coiled up, potentially creating any kind of other uh, reaction or reactants, I should say. Our nano VNA is going to emit a signal out channel zero. That signal is gonna come out through our coaxial cable and it's gonna go in on the center conductor. And it's gonna transfer through this core and come out on this side. Again, our ground is shorted. Now what's going to happen is we're going to see our attenuation. We're going to be able to measure that because the emitted signal, when it goes through all of this mess and comes back into our nano VNA, will compare the difference of the output signal to the input signal. And that's how we're going to be able to measure our attenuation of our unbalanced current. Additionally, what we're going to do is we're going to connect our nano VNA up to a computer and we're going to be able to measure and see everything on the computer screen to make it nice and easy for the folks at home playing along. And the other thing is, is that we are going to do our through calibration on our nano VNA with these cables. And that way we remove any kind of interference or additional attenuation that these cables may cause. So everybody can calm down about that. Well, the sweeps are done and let's just talk a little bit about it. So what we did is we ran a sweep from 0.25 megahertz through 30 megahertz. We did a sweep with both cores the k type core is represented in green and the mix 31 core is represented in blue i'm really surprised by the results anyhow when we did the sweep we did 25 
segments, which increase our number of data points to 2,525 across our span to give us more granular measurements. When we take a look at this, the chart is an S21 gain chart. We talked about that earlier and what exactly it means. Now, what we do notice there, somewhere around 23 megahertz through uh, the, up to the 10 meter band, uh, the start of the 10 meter band around 28 megahertz, we do see some extreme dipping that's taking place in there. And so I ran the test multiple times. Uh, I connected the cores through both sets of cables that ran through, and I kept getting the same results. Now, I don't know if that is uh, part of the core in the way that it works. I've tested the, the one before, and I don't recall that being the case. I don't know if there's some sort of reactance that the NetoVNA and or the cores and or the test leads are picking up in the ham shack. I suspect that's likely the case and would suspect that that would be a little bit flatter through 23, give or take megahertz through 28. But in any event, we do have those dips in there. Uh, when we take a look at this, the Mix 31 does have better attenuation at um, 160 meters. So if we look right about here, where I have marker one, this is on the K-type core. Uh, on the K-type core, we're looking at around negative 17 dB of attenuation, and that's not what you want. You want to be at 30 or below, which we are on the Mix 31, but not the K-type. So when we take a look at this, the K-type doesn't really start to perform any better until we get to around 18 megahertz right around here. Uh, where it is the same around negative 34, 35 dB down. And uh, that would be fine and good choking, but even at uh, 40 meters, this is above 30 um, dB down. It's at 29.15. Now, it's close enough that I'm probably splitting hairs there. So at 40 and above, I would have no problem using the K-type core, but I get better common mode current attenuation on the Mix 31. The Mix 31 is cheaper, so I think I would stick with Mix 31. Now, perhaps the way that we wound this choke uh, works very well for Mix 31 and not so much for K-Type. So maybe we'll do some other tests with other core designs or choke designs, I should say. But in this event, what I'm going to say is stick with Mix 31. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching. It's much appreciated.